Listen, gentlemen, uh, first of all, accept my sincere apologies that the African Union Commission that was originally scheduled to be our guest for today's session could not make it. They only confirmed to us yesterday that due to unavoidable circumstances, their representative who would have been on the show is unable to participate. In order that we do not disrupt the show or have a break in between, and what is more important, disappoint you, our guests who have already uh, confirmed to participate at today's function, we quickly discussed as a management team of AFRA and came up with an alternative. And the alternative is to host the Secretary General of AFRA, Mr. Abdel Rahman Bethe, who today would be giving us some updates on the state of the industry, the progress towards industry recovery, COVID-19, the vaccinations and related issues, matters relating to implementation of single Afghan air transport market, preparedness of African airlines towards the boom in traffic once we are all vaccinated or once the situation normalizes and traffic rebound, among other issues. So ladies and gentlemen, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Mr. Bethe will give us a rundown on current happenings in the industry plus more. And as in previous sessions, you have the opportunity to participate in the discussions. Please do remember to post your questions in the Q&A tab. If you have comments, please let them come through in the chat box. And at the appropriate time, we would visit those sites and bring up your comments and questions for Mr. Better to provide appropriate responses. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I wish to welcome my guest today, Mr. Abdul Rahman Bete, Secretary General Afra. SG, you're welcome. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you for having me again on the show. Great. You have been our, our host, uh, the first host, and the first host to appear twice on Sky Connect Dialogue. Thank you yeah. so much for uh, the time and the opportunity. Uh, as I indicated, today we're going to uh, give our guests, our delegates, the, an opportunity and an overview of the state of the air transport industry, particularly in Africa. So if I may start off with uh, the first question, if you can briefly give us a rundown of the state of the industry, particularly with regards to traffic evolution, flight resumptions, capacity utilization. Where are we as Africa, please? Thank you for this question. First of all, I would like to greet uh, all your audience for uh, this uh, SkyConnect uh, dialogue. At AFRA, we are uh, following monthly the performance of uh, African airlines. In the month of uh, August, air uh, passenger traffic reached 46.8% uh, compared to uh, the same month in 2019, while the capacity was at 54.6%. Uh, the restart of operation on intercontinental routes by African Airlines reached 77.8% in August, though frequency and capacity remain constraints. The full year revenue loss for African Airlines in 2020 uh, was uh, $10.21 billion which represent 58.8% uh, of 2019 revenues. And we expect for uh, 2021, a loss of revenues of $8.2 billion, which uh, will represent 47.2% uh, uh, of the full year 2019 revenues. Uh, still the intra-African connectivity is low, it reached 
52% of the pre-COVID level in August 2021. These are, in a nutshell, uh, what uh, I can give as performance of African airlines in August. It would appear we are still not out of the woods yet. Um, projecting year end revenue loss of about 8.2 billion compared to 2019 is still a far way off from where this industry was in 2019. What is accounting for the slow restart? Yes, it's a very complex situation. Uh, you see uh, travel restrictions across the continent and um, uh, between Africa and other regions is um, a, a main reason of uh, the slow uh, restart of uh, the business. And uh, the reduced demand due to economic uh, downturn in most of uh, African countries also is not uh, favorizing the restart of uh, air transport. Uh, we, we can see also the impact of COVID-19 on uh, tourism and uh, trade across the continent. And um, also for uh, business meeting, we are seeing a lot of uh, meetings on virtual and uh, in-person me uh, meetings are, are, are very few uh, currently. Uh, I will add on that the slow pace of vaccination rollout in Africa. As you know, uh, on Africa, we have less than 2% of uh, African citizens which got the two doses of vaccines. Uh, when at uh, the global level, we are at uh, uh, 25%. Uh, so uh, this is not also uh, facilitating the restart. And um, we are seeing also a lack of harmonization of health protocols. And uh, we know that safe reopening of borders in an harmonized manner is critical for the restart of African aviation. Different protocols across the continent create confusion for travelers and uh, keep the traffic depressed. And the cost and type of test remain a limiting factor across uh, Africa, with PCR tests being the standard and uh, the cost uh, being from 30 to $150, which is uh, adding on the cost of uh, travel. We know that uh, an increase of 10% of travel cost can reduce the demand by 15%. Those are the reason the restart uh, is, uh, is slow currently. And it's, this is complex, and I'm not sure how we're going to unpack all of these challenges with if the industry is actually set to rebound um, for Africa. But, you know, the, the cost of the test is particularly worrisome. But what is more, if history is on our side, I'm sure you would agree with me that even today, the Jack Chirac, the former French president's tax that was imposed some years back, is still being collected in some markets on airlines. Now, are we sure we are going to have this COVID test eventually disappear and all the related costs on passengers? I, I, I don't get your question. The question is, with the high COVID test cost, yeah. now, History has told us that the former French president Jacques Chirac task that oh, was okay. introduced some years back is still being collected in some countries today. Now, are we sure that eventually when COVID is behind us, we will withdraw all of these uh, COVID related taxes on the industry? Oh, yes. Okay. There is the difference between the Chirac tax and the uh the PCR test cost, because the Chirac tax was something which was included in the, in the fares the passengers are paying. The PCR test cost is something the passengers is uh, directly uh, supporting now. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I think it will disappear when there will be no need for PCR 
test requirement for uh, travelers. So th there is a kind of difference between the two. Ah, that, that calms my heart a bit. It calms my heart that tra air travelers will at some point actually not have to pay for uh, this, this level of tax. But if I may, we see that intercontinental travel is recovering faster than uh, or, or the, the rate of resumption of intercontinental flights is much better than intra-Africa and domestic operations at about 77.8%, you said. What is driving this growth or resumption on international routes? Yes, I, I, I think for Africa, uh, the, 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 the domestic and intra-Africa are uh, the, the, the market which are um, uh, uh, re resuming, which are restart, restarting faster. Uh, the intercontinental, in fact, is impacted uh, with uh, travel restrictions. We are seeing a lot of uh, travel restrictions uh, on uh, African citizens from other regions. So uh, for this reason, uh, today on Africa, the uh, big share of traffic is represented by domestic market. And then after uh, uh, intra-Africa and intercontinental uh, so far. But in terms of number of routes that have actually been restarted, intercontinental is more. Yes, I, I agree. I agree on that. In terms of uh, routes, intercontinental is uh, doing, uh, uh, doing well. Uh, I think this is uh, because uh, we have some global uh, operators on Africa and uh, they are trying to, to restart and uh, putting in place their network and also uh, the non-African operators have uh, restarted their, uh, their routes uh, toward the uh, African continent. Wow, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm told some airlines have even exceeded 90% of their intercontinental routes resumption. Yes, uh, that is uh, right. Uh, the airlines that have uh, restarted operation over 90% uh, of their intercontinental routes are the ones that have uh, uh, had a big mega hub before the COVID-19, namely for August uh, 2021, uh, we can name uh, uh, Ethiopian Airlines in Addis, Royal uh, Air Maroc in Casablanca, and Egypt in Cairo. They have already reached more than 90% of their uh, intercontinental routes uh, before the COVID-19. It is mainly for them to rebuild connectivity through their hub, at the same time, they position themselves on the markets they, they are seeing, serving. But would you know, are load factors also improving or they are still depressed on both domestic, regional and intercontinental? Are we seeing improvement? Yes, we are, we are seeing improvement on all markets and uh, it's uh, slow. However, the improvement, uh, we are seeing the improvement and uh, we hope that uh, by end of 2022, it will be much more better than what we have seen in 2020 and uh, the first semester of 2021. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Bethe, for that. Uh, now let me switch a little bit to um, cargo. We have seen that even though the passenger side of the business has over the last one and uh, uh, half years plus not been doing so well, cargo on the other hand has been a cash cow. Have African airlines now taken advantage of cargo operations? Uh, yes, um, we have seen uh, during this uh, pandemic that uh, uh, an increase on cargo operations uh, across uh, the, the, the continent. 
In 2020, uh, cargo operations represented 36% of airlines' uh, uh, business, uh, when it was uh, only 12% in uh, 2019. So many uh, African airlines have um, reconverted their passenger aircraft to cargo aircraft uh, to uh, meet the demand, rising demand of cargo. At AFRA, uh, we think that uh, uh, African airlines need to put uh, cargo uh, as a priority in their uh, business uh, from, from now. And uh, they think to uh, need to rethink their strategies on, 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 on cargo. Oh, great. So is the perception um, among African airlines about cargo now changing? Because in the past, cargo was being looked at as uh, something supplementary and, and not giving the importance it deserves. Is the picture now changing? Are airlines now looking at it more positively and investing in that area? Definitely, um, we are seeing a change. And uh, uh, as I said, many uh, African operators are uh, uh, trying to develop their cargo operations. However, we know that there are still many challenges regarding the cargo development across the continent. So as uh, stakeholders, we need uh, to tackle these, uh, these challenges. I mean, uh, challenges regarding infrastructures, regarding taxes and charges on uh, cargo, and also regarding uh, the liberalization of uh, 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 traffic rights. Oh, good. So we hope we don't slow back on that. Um, I, I was also reading the other day that um, Ethiopian airline has plans to actually um, set up in partnership with uh, some other organization, a converting conversion facility to convert uh, passenger aircraft to freighters. Um, is, can you throw a bit more light on that if you have any information? Uh, thank you, uh, Rafael. We commend uh, Ethiopian for this initiative to put in place a facility to convert uh, aircraft in cargo in Addis Ababa. And uh, what I know that uh, uh, it's a very important initiative. And uh, uh, tomorrow, AFRA will have a meeting with Ethiopian Airlines on this project. And we'll see how uh, all African airlines can uh, benefit from this uh, initiative. In fact, it will be good uh, if, if priority is given to African airlines that might want to use, take advantage of Ethiopian capabilities to actually convert uh, some equipment into freighters to support the cargo business. And I'm sure AFRA will push hard for that if their need arises. Of course. Now, now it's, it's I, I have a call from one of our very regular and dedicated um, participants on this platform, Mr. Barry Kashambo, and uh, he, He's asking a question. He wants to know if there are any updates on the recovery of active operations in East and Southern Africa region, especially now that vaccination rates have gone to double figures. Is there any update on the operations? Is there is the recovery much better in East Africa than before now that the vaccination rates are also going up? That's the first part of his question. Yes, um, you, you see um, the numbers of um, contamination in East and Southern region of Africa has been uh, very high uh, in uh, uh, recent months in June and July. And uh, it's uh, going down now. And uh, uh, we, we, we have seen uh, uh, some restart in, across all the continents and also in East Africa and also in the southern uh, region of Africa. Airlines are uh, uh, trying to restart their network, their, uh, their business. 
Uh, however, uh, the, the rollout of vaccination is very low uh, on the continent and also on uh, uh, eastern and southern region of Africa. And we really call uh, government to speed up the rollout of vaccination to facilitate the restart of air transport across uh, the, the continent. Uh, we are seeing some restart, as I said before. However, it's very slow so far. Uh, thank you. Now, the, the follow-up question is that what impact is expected on additional cost of the PCR test being demanded by some states and on the cost of travel? Some states think it within the same East and Southern Africa countries are beginning to increase the PCR test cost. And the question is, what impact is this likely to have on the cost of travel and traffic? Yes, uh, you, you see the fares, uh, travel fares across the African continent are very high, even before the COVID-19. So increasing the PCR test costs will add on this uh, high cost and uh, will impact uh, the demand. I want here to commend the initiative uh, in the ECOWAS region where uh, the government, the states have decided to put uh, the PCR test at uh, $50. And uh, in uh, all, uh, uh, many countries in uh, West Africa today, the cost is $50. If you compare, compare that to uh, $100 or $150 in other regions, uh, it makes a difference. So at, as AFRA, our call to government will be to reduce the, the PCR uh, uh, test cost. In some regions, in Europe, for example, for travelers, it's free. Wow. You see? So, uh, but uh, whilst commending the ECOWAS uh, member states on uh, this laudable uh, step that they have taken to cap the PCR test cost, I just wish that they would act with the same uh, collective zeal and enthusiasm on the issues of taxes and charges in that region, because it would appear that region also seems to have the highest cost, uh, the highest uh, taxes um, of all the sub-regions on Africa. Uh, yes, I, 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 want to, I want to share to, to tell you that there is an uh, initiative at um, uh, ECOWAS regions on uh, taxes and charges also. They have put in place a tax force. The tax okay. force has started uh, to work on uh, early July. And uh, the objective is to look at the taxes and charges level on this region, because as you say, uh, taxes and charges are very high in uh, uh, Western Central Africa. And to see how to come together to a, a solution to reduce taxes and charges for uh, uh, travelers. Oh, excellent. So at least something is, something is being done. That region is, seems to be quite active in, in a number of areas because I also understand they are working towards a single currency for the 16, 17 member countries of ECOWAS, the ECO. So I, I, there must be a lot of dynamism going on there. Let's hope that sooner or later, all of these bear fruits and they will have positive impact on uh, African aviation. Now, we touched briefly on vaccination, but uh, let me just say, um, the, the pace of vaccination is low and slow. At the time, you, you indicated that the rate Average global uh, rate is about 35%. Whilst 30, that 30, 30, 25, 25. 25. Yeah. 25% and that of Africa is below 2%. How pathetic. So now 
the West, some of the Western countries are now insisting that uh, the, on the use of travel passports within their regions. Now, this might just have a spillover to Africa, probably not immediately, but as we move along and as the situation improves further. Is there a way you think Africa can begin to deal with this situation? Uh, it's too early for us to, to require vaccination as a prerequisite for passengers travel. However, you know that uh, at the time, yellow fever was a requirement for travelers. So uh, we know that uh, one day it may, it may come to us as a requirement. AFRA is aligned with uh, African Union Commission and the uh, African Civil Aviation Commission on this uh, issue of uh, uh, vaccine passport. And um, uh, we, we think that it's too early because the rate of vaccination is very low to put as a requirement vaccination. So far, the PCR, negative PCR test is the requirement and uh, it's working very well. So we need to keep the PCR test as the requirement. And maybe when uh, we'll have uh, a good rate of vaccination across the world, maybe the vaccination can become then a, a prerequisite. I want to add on that also. You see, yeah. even in Europe, now some are uh, uh, requesting a further dose of vaccination. So how can you talk now about a passport, vaccine passport, when there are many uncertainty on the vaccines as well, because we don't know if we will need a fair dose of vaccine during the next uh, month. So uh, we, 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 we have aligned with African Union Commission on this, uh, this matter. Okay, so, so as, as, uh, going forward, um, Africa's view is that a PCR test should be high, is highly recommended as the means to facilitate travel whilst we work on increasing the level of vaccinations um, across the world with a view to seeing how best we can get rid of um, COVID-19 and then move on. Thank, thanks so much uh, for, for, for that uh, clarification, uh, SG. I, I have another question. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Carlos Ferreira from TAC. He's saying that is AFRA working or planning to work with African governments to implement some form of international recognition of the vaccines in order to reduce passenger costs to travel? For example, a passenger that is fully vaccinated to have a vaccination card recognized by other countries around the world and be exempt from PCR tests every time he or she needs to travel. Is, is yes, have I got any initiative in this regard? Uh, this is a good question because as uh, you said uh, in Europe region, for example, if you are vaccinated, you can uh, travel within uh, this uh, region. Uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, AFRA is a member of a tax force set up by African Union and uh, African CDC. And this kind of uh, issues are discussed there. And um, I'm sure that uh, AFRA will bring uh, 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 this uh, issue at the level of ACDC and African uh, Union. And um, uh, so far, as I said, the number of uh, African citizens vaccinated is, is very, very low. And uh, uh, it will grow, of course. And it will be important uh, to, um, 
to rule that uh, the people who will get the vaccination uh, can travel across uh, Africa without any other requirements. Uh, great. I think it'll be really good if the tax force um, uh, works, takes this one on board and let us see. Otherwise, then it doesn't help uh, for people to, have to be fully vaccinated. And then when they have to travel, they still might be required to provide a PCR test. So, but if they, there's a way of a mutual recognition of such a certificate, uh, then that would also um, ease the burden on them. And two, it could also encourage more people to get vaccinated because the challenge in some countries is that people are still very skeptical about the vaccine and are not yielding themselves up to take up the vaccination. Thank you. So now, as you let me move on a bit and, and digress slightly into uh, the industry's competitiveness uh, now and into the future. You know, COVID has brought to the fore the difficulty the aviation industry have in actually playing on a level third. When COVID struck, the global air transport industry led by IATA, IKO, AFRA, and all the other big players and bodies appeal to countries and governments to come to the aid of airlines. I am informed that as of now, globally, some 250 billion US dollars have been given either as cash injections or subsidies or some form of support to the aviation industry globally. In Africa, our portion out of this 250 billion is just below 2 billion. Now, this is probably proportionate to Africa's share of global air, trans, air traffic, or probably even less. Considering that Africa was originally at a weaker state even before COVID, and now with other regions and other airlines outside of Africa, some receiving much better support than African airlines. When the industry resumes, recovers, and we start to compete, would you think African airlines will be playing in a competitive field against these airlines who are already ahead in terms of support from governments? Thank you very much for this uh, question. Airline uh, financial health is a very uh, critical issue. And um, uh, for, for, for the sustainability uh, going forward of our uh, industry. As you mentioned, in many uh, regions, we have seen uh, a financial support to uh, their uh, airlines. For Africa, it's only $2.7 billion support to African airlines. And mainly the support is going from states to state-owned uh, uh, airlines. And uh, as you mentioned, it uh, will uh, distort the competition among the airlines which have received support and the one which have not received support. And as you know, the market share of African airlines on intercontinental has been very low even before the COVID-19. So our African airline will be competing with some foreign carriers from other regions which have received support for the government. This is uh, something worrying and um, uh, we still continue to call for government to support the industry. We know that uh, African states 
are have not the um, enough possibility to give financial direct financial support to to their airlines. However, there are other means of support they can give to the airlines to relieve their financial uh, situation. So we continue to work on that with all uh, aviation stakeholders at African Civil Aviation Commission and African Union Commission level. It's very critical for the performance of our African airlines. Uh, okay, thank you so much. So, so whatever it is, um, we will not be starting this um, post-COVID on, on the equal foot. There, there will definitely be, some will be better um, resourced and better ready than others. But that reminds me, uh, I think a, a few weeks back, two or three weeks back, um, they, there was this meeting that was called by, to, to actually discuss some funding that was, um, seemed to be available or been uh, getting ready for, for the industry. Where are we with that? Any progress? Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to disclose uh, um, uh, anything because uh, so far, as you said, we had some meetings uh, among ourselves, I mean, uh, the stakeholders, to make some uh, propos proposals to the African Union Commission, because we were um, uh, advised that uh, they may have some funds uh, to, uh, uh, for African airlines. So we, we made our uh, proposals and uh, we are still uh, waiting confirmation of the amounts uh, going forward. So I don't know if, if you can uh, take it as a good news so far. Okay, that, that seems to be a silver lining um, on, on the bottom of airlines in Africa. And um, I, I hope also for the entire aviation industry, not just airlines. Uh, but going forward, I think one of the areas that African airlines do a lot more talking than action is in the area of collaboration. And now than ever before, there is a very high need for airlines to work together. One, because the traffic is not there, it's not much. And two, because the connectivity is next to nothing. And if you want to operate alone, chances are you will not have, the, have enough traffic to be able to do um, effective operations. So you need to collaborate. Are we seeing some level of collaboration among airlines since COVID struck? Hello, it, has, it was breaking, yeah, Rafael. So I didn't get the end of your question. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, 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 end of my question was, since COVID started, are we seeing African airlines collaborating a bit more better than they, they were doing in the past? Or the st story is still the same? Uh, yes, uh, this is a very good uh, question. Collaboration among uh, African airlines is, uh, is critical and is key going forward. And uh, um, unfortunately, I have to say that uh, there is a lack of cooperation among our African airlines. Uh, even before the COVID-19, AFRA has been advocating for more collaboration. Uh, the objective of collaboration is to share capacities, reduce costs, and increase revenues for airlines. At AFRA, since uh, the COVID-19, we have proposed to members uh, new projects aimed to achieve uh, a, a better collaboration. And uh, I, I will say also, AFRA is staging on the uh, 14th of September, 2021, and a very important workshop on uh, airline cons consolidation in Africa. It's um, uh, aimed to, to equip our members at a high level on uh, the benefits of uh, consolidation and uh, also cooperation 
between uh, our African airlines. Are we likely to see uh, some more results? Have we learned our lessons? And then we would want to work together this time around? I, I, I really hope so. Uh, because uh, you, you, you see there is a benefit for collaboration. And uh, I, I think that uh, 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 African airlines will uh, 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 realize that uh, uh, collaboration is something they need to, to engage in and it will be beneficial for, for uh, their uh, operation. So uh, we will uh, continue at AFRA to call for and push for this uh, uh, cooperation. And I'm sure that uh, uh, one day it will come. And I hope it will, be, it will come very soon. But the, the issue has always been that airlines see themselves more as competitors rather than collaborators. They see themselves as uh, trying to take away traffic from each other rather than pulling traffic together and sharing the benefits of the volumes. How can we change that mindset? You, you see, uh, they are killing each other, in fact. So when they are not uh, collaborating, I can give some example. You may see, for example, uh, three airlines operating on the same route at the same time. So you cannot say you are uh, taking the market from the other airlines. So obviously all the three airlines will be losing benefit, money, operating at the same time on the same route. So this is uh, obvious for me. It will not work if, if the mindset will continue to be, I take market share from others. You can collaborate at the same time, compete. I, I believe so. I mean, and, and that, is, that is actually the way this industry is known to best operate. You compete and you collaborate because no one airline can do it all alone. So it's important that you work together to ensure that you attain success at all levels. Now, I have a, another call from Heidi, from Well Air News. Uh, Heidi wants to know if you can tell us what the, uh, the, the, how much money is involved in this fund from the African Union. Do you know the exact amount that is involved? No, I, 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 I don't know what is the, the amount. Uh, what I know uh, at African Union Commission level, they have, they have, have some funds for Africa, not only for aviation. So um, African Union Commission will uh, make a case for av aviation to, to get funds for African airlines. As I said before, uh, so far we don't know what is the, the, the amount. What we did as uh, aviation uh, stakeholders is to work on some criteria of disbursement of these funds for African airlines. And we made the proposal to African Union on that. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Mr. Bent, before I, I proceed, let me just um, request delegates to please post your questions on the Q&A tab or comments in the chat box, and then we will pick these up as we get to the, uh, the, the, the last lap of this section. And um, once we are there, I will actually um, happily bring up your questions for you to get response uh, from our guest, Mr. Bethe, Secretary General, African Airlines Association. Now let's switch gears a little bit again to go to um, a subject that is very exciting, uh, very stimulating, and which we all are so hopeful about, but which to some extent is 
also beginning to um, take a slower pace than we had actually anticipated. And I'm talking about the single African air transport market. So far, we are told by AFCA that some 38 countries have signed the Solemn Commitment and 18 of them have signed the Memorandum of Implementation to align their regulations to be widely compliant. Now, there's also this continuous drive to get more states to sign the Solemn Commitment and Memorandum of Implementation. I just wanted your take. How do you think we should proceed? Do we get more members? Do we move on with what we have and encourage others to come on board? What, are, what is your take on how we should progress at this stage? You, you see, we all know the benefits of uh, liberalization. Huh? And uh, we, we have seen in um, recent uh, months that uh, the number of uh, states which committed to SATAM uh, is not growing, it's, it's, it's growing very slowly. And um, uh, we, we really need to make sure that the, 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 the states which committed to SATAM are really implementing the provision of SATAM. As you said, we have uh, so far 38 states which have signed and 18 states have signed the memorandum of implementation. Are we sure that these 38 states which made this political commitment are really implementing it? Because if the 38 states are implementing it, these 38 states represent a big share of air transport in the continent. So let us start with the one who have signed it, and I'm sure that the others will join the process. And I hope that the COVID-19 will not be a reason for some states to slow down the implementation of uh, SATAM and come back to a kind of uh, protectionism for their national carriers. Does, does the SATAM begin to sound more like the YD of old, in your view? No, I, I don't think so. Because uh, you, you see, the, the, the YD, we, we had the 40. I think 42 or 44 uh, states who have who signed uh, the, the YD, yes. more than the SATAM uh, today. And uh, for SATAM, we have a commitment, which is a political engagement to implement. So why don't go to the state who have signed and tell them you have signed, you have committed politically to do it. Now, technically, you need to implement it. And we have an executing agency for the implementation. And we have also a legal framework, which is in place today. Mm. So uh, as you know, we have a joint prioritized action plan for SATAM. AFRA is part of, of it. And all uh, uh, aviation stakeholders are engaged on the joint prioritized action plan. It may take some time. However, I am sure that uh, we'll come to, to it will achieve it. Hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bete. Now, um, let me go to a subject that is dear to my heart and I'm sure to many of our listeners here. Um, and uh, even though we saw the significant progress in the past, uh, we just wanted to be reassured that in the midst of lack of funding and all the complications of COVID and loss of staff and all that, we are not going to lose sight of that. And I'm talking about safety in the African continent, safety particularly of African airlines. I know when money becomes difficult to come by, chances always are that some operators begin to cut corners. 
How is AFRA working with other industry stakeholders to ensure that airlines meet their safety obligations so that now and after now, the industry continues to gather steam in its safety march forward? And you see, safety is not only airlines, it's all the aviation stakeholders. Yes. It's uh, the industry, it's uh, also the civil aviation authorities. Yes. And in the recent years, we have seen an uh, improvement of safety level, not only uh, in uh, the industry and also at the, mm -hmm. uh, the oversight level of the, the industry. So uh, you are right, when uh, uh, airlines are short of budget, we may think that uh, it will impact safety. However, the good thing is that if the regulator, uh, the, 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 the CAAs are doing their, their work and uh, uh, any risk will happen for, for safety because they are there to make sure that uh, the industry is uh, complying with the safety standards. I want also here to mention that uh, uh, AFRA is engaged with uh, IATA and uh, AFCAC to enhance the safety level of African uh, airlines. So it is a project founded by uh, African Development Bank and uh, it has started uh, in uh, April this year. Oh, great. Thank you so much. So at least there, there, there's some attention still being given to, uh, to, to safety across the board. Um, let's let's um, keep uh, the pressure on and let's encourage all our members and non-members and all operators across Africa to continue to ensure that we don't drop the ball at any point because this is absolutely critical. Now, I have a couple of questions here. The first one is from Walter Malanga. He says, on Saturn, how can AFRA ensure that member airlines sign one memorandum agreeing to the objectives of Saturn and the same presented to states? It has been felt that national airlines are the hindrance to full implementation of Saturn. So can AFRA lead a crusade like that, ensure that all airlines, for instance, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda, in Ghana, in Nigeria, come together, sign one MOU that, look, we agree to SATAM and we uh, agree to all the tenants of SATAM and we want the market to be open up. And this memo is presented to the states of those countries. Is this something that Afra, Afra has an appetite for? Uh, this can uh, be something uh, uh, coming later in time. Uh, at AFRA, what we are doing is um, to build awareness among uh, African airlines on Saturn. As you know, Rafael, we are staging uh, at end of September a very important uh, workshop on uh, uh, Saturn capacity building for African airlines. We are partnering on that with African Union Commission and African Civil Aviation Commission, because we think that uh, uh, there are lack of uh, information regarding uh, Saturn among many of uh, our uh, African airlines. So the first step for us is to organize this workshop to explain what is Saturn, what is the benefit for African airlines, what uh, also to discuss about the legal framework of SATAM, to have um, a discussion with our members, to, uh, to, uh, to respond to their fears about the, the SATAM. And then after they, they are, when they are convinced, we can come with uh, an MOU of African Airlines uh, to states. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So um, I, I think um, 
then you get a you get a clarity there. So this is uh, it's too soon yet, but it is something that uh, might come at some point in time once all the sensitization work is done. Now another question from Rihab Bengara of Sydney Airlines. It's actually not a question, but a comment. It says it is important that the vaccination pass or card be recognized by EU and other countries to avoid extra costs or constraints of confinement. Um, Ria, I think you, you're absolutely right, and we're all saying the same thing. Yes, the only thing the SG added was that we should not make a vaccine pass or passport uh, the only means of travel. Otherwise, it will cut off a lot of other people who might want to travel by uh, by air, and so we should use the PCR test as a primary source of it, and we can complement that with the uh, vaccine passport. Now, another question, uh, SG, this, this is for you, and this is from Lyndon Baines from Plain Talk. It says, uh, on Saturn, while it promotes open access to market, what is being proposed to remove other obstacles that are contrary to the spirit of Saturn. For example, differential charges imposed in many countries and their infrastructure service providers on airlines from other African countries. Another example, or a further example on that, an operator from Rwanda may pay far less in London parking and service fees in South Africa, whilst the South African operator operating under reciprocal rights is charged significantly far higher fees for the same service to be rendered at the other end of the route. What are we doing to actually harmonize charges, fees, and taxes under a certain environment? This is a very good question. As I said before, for SATAM implementation, we have the Joint Prioritize Action Plan. And this Joint Prioritize Action Plan has some pillars. Infrastructures is one of the pillars. Taxi charges is also part of the pillars. So all aviation stakeholders are engaged on this action plan and uh, we we are having annual meeting under the leadership of African uh, Civil Aviation Commission to make sure that we'll progress on these uh, pillars. Taxes and charges in, uh, is uh, one of them. I may confess that it's not uh, easy because it's not engaging only the air transport sector, it's uh, also engaging the ministries in charge of finance in states. However, it's on the program of the uh, Joint Prioritize Action Plan. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Betting. Now, the, 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 my other question now to you, AFRA signed MOU with UNWTO recently. We are all aware that Air transport and tourism are like different sides of the same coin. What do you hope to achieve with this collaboration with UNWTO? Yes, Rafael, we, we know that uh, aviation and tourism are interrelated uh, uh, activities. And we have signed this MOU recently with uh, UNWTO. And uh, our objective to put in place some actions regarding the harmonization of uh, regulatory framework, uh, promotion of uh, security and safety of travelers at uh, airports and also uh, tourist destination, promotion of uh, the harmonization of COVID-19 protocols uh, from both the aviation and tourism sectors, and uh, also advocacy to, uh, uh, to ease uh, visa restrictions we are so far uh, seeing across uh, the, 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 the continent. 
And AFRA has signed also MOUs with other organizations like uh, IATA, ACI Africa, and uh, ICAO. Oh, thank, thank you. So, so you're broadening your scope of cooperation, formalizing it so that jointly you can embark on the initiatives that will um, propel the growth of this industry. Well done, Mr. Bete, on that. I cannot let you go, even though our time is up, without actually asking you uh, to give us a parting shot. What is your final message to us before we close? Thank you. I, I don't have only one message, Raphael. There are many. So um, um, the performance of African airline is, uh, is, is growing slowly. Unfortunately, uh, travel restrictions we are seeing is um, uh, holding back the, the demand. And also cargo operations is growing and they should uh, now be considered as a core business for our African uh, airlines. Regarding vaccination, we call for uh, speeding up of uh, uh, vaccination across uh, the, the, the continent. And also we call for cooperation among African uh, airlines. And uh, our airline need also to rethink their business and to create more resilience for future uh, uh, crises. During the COVID-19, we have seen more dialogue among the stakeholders. We need to continue uh, to establish a permanent dialogue uh, between ourselves. This is very important. And uh, we, we need uh, to make sure we continue uh, implementing the AU 2063 flagship project. The SATAM, we talk about it, the African Continental uh, uh, free trade area and the free movement protocol to sustain the development of avi aviation in Africa. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdel Rahman Ibethe, Secretary General African Airlines Association, for giving us a good updates on the state of the industry and running us through some of the critical areas that we need to focus on and work on together in order to ensure that African aviation takes up its rightful place now and in the future. We look forward to getting back in touch with you sooner rather than later for further additional clarification as the need might arrive. Thank you so much, my guest, for um, joining us on the show today and uh, for asking some critical questions and seeking some clarifications uh, we do appreciate your participation and we would be coming back to you soon with our next guest uh, on the October show coming first week of October. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of your time. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.